Welcome back on the Central Arkansas Bear Basketball Report with head coach Corliss Williamson. I'm Kirby Smith and it's time to got now to get into the second game of the week. The Lamar Cardinals came here to the Ferris Center and unfortunately you guys had faced them earlier this year, losing 103 to 67. That was a tough loss for you guys. Take me through some of your game plan for this week and how you're getting the guys, their mindset right to take the Cardinals on again and definitely to regain, to show these Cardinals that this Bears team is nothing that's going to lay down. Right. You know, uh, you look at the first game in conference play against Lamar, we uh, it was pretty much embarrassing the way we performed and, and came out and competed against them. And uh, we definitely felt our team was better um, from a standpoint of how hard we were playing. And we thought our confidence was high coming off the two wins in a row. So uh, to have an opportunity to play them here on our home court, we definitely wanted to uh, encourage our guys to continue to work hard in practice. And uh, we saw some things that we could do differently against Lamar, and, and we tried to uh, follow our game plan and figure out a way to win. As we get into the highlights here again, the Bears came out firing well. As you see, a nice little layup there. And here's Mark Rudledge. We said you'd see him again playing well, driving in the paint. With Quentin Miles there getting the rebound. You guys out-rebounded Nichols last week, or on Wednesday, sorry, I didn't forgot to mention that. And you out-rebounded Lamar as well. It? Yes, we did. You know, I think we ended up with 19 offensive rebounds. You know, that, that can go either way. Uh, you know, it's good that we're getting offensive rebounds, but it means we're missing a few shots. So. Um, you know, but we were proud of the effort. I mean, our guys came out extremely uh, focused. Uh, they played hard. You see Robert Crawford there knocking down a three-point shot. Uh, we were aggressive, uh, sometimes a little overly aggressive and, and missed a few shots. But, uh, you know, Mark Rutledge attacked the basket right there. That, that was just a big play for us early on. When you guys come out strong like this, it definitely helps to get the crowd into it early, huh? Oh, it does. I mean, our, our crowd really uh, came out to support us. It was a great atmosphere for college basketball. And when you have plays like that where Robert Crawford found um, uh, Anthony Borden there for the dunk and then you know, Jarvis Garner uh, missing the shot, but then you get Robert Crawford getting an offensive rebound. Just that effort, uh, our fans fed off of that energy and in turn it, our, our players enjoyed playing hard for them. You guys led by as much as seven, uh, or rather eight in the first, and then Lamar comes here. We start. We just saw one of their bucket baskets reel off seven straight to, uh, to take the lead. Yes. You guys didn't give up, though. No, we didn't give up, you know, and the thing we talked about earlier was a shot selection against Nichols, which was good. Uh, but then we started taking some ill-advised shots uh, once we got the lead and uh, a few turnovers here and there, and it gave Lamar an opportunity to, to make a run. As you see there, I think it was Devin Lamb knocking down that jump shot. You know, we're not going to see a whole lot on the highlights here, but you guys played fairly well defensively. Um, at halftime, you're only down 33 to 29, even though you only shot 33% from the field. Right, right. We definitely didn't shoot the ball well in the first half, uh, but I thought our defense, we were really focused defensively. Uh, you know, we had a few mishaps here and there, uh, but I thought overall we tried to uh, execute our game plan and our guys were really focused and trying to, uh, trying to get a good start off for that game. And you guys continue to move here and fight the ball. There's Ryan Williams fighting down low. Jordan Harks picking it back up and you guys dish well underneath the basket as that was, I believe, Mark Rutledge again who played well for you. Oh, yes, yeah, Mark played really hard. I mean, he played with his heart. Uh, as you see there, he tries to draw a foul, but Quentin Miles came in to finish the play up with an offensive rebound. Uh, Bears shot 55% from the field in the second half. Unfortunately, <laughs> Lamar shot 82%. I mean, that's unreal, and that's why they're the number one team on our side of the conference. That's what happens, you know. Uh, when, when you see Lamar uh, come out there, you know they have the ability to score the basketball. It's a good pass by uh, Quentin Miles to, um, to Anthony Borton. Uh, we, we were a little worried about them in the second half. We knew that they didn't play well in the first half, but we never thought they'd shoot 80-plus 80, 80 percent. So uh, when you have a team shooting like that, it makes it for a difficult night. Uh, the, the key here was you said that you guys couldn't give up when the game got rough like this. Are you pretty pleased with how your Bears responded? I am. I am. We, we were pretty pleased as a staff, and we thought our guys, you know, continued to fight hard and to play hard. Uh, not necessarily smart at times, but uh, we thought they did compete. They didn't give up. Uh, you see there, Jordan Harks finishes the layup. We're just down three at this point. But, um, and also had an opportunity to cut it. I think we took the lead with about one, one point with about eight minutes to go. But uh, Lamar just kind of went off on a tear on us. Their guard play is incredibly strong, perhaps some of the strongest in the conference. And I know the West side is a little stronger than ours right now as far as their records go. But definitely when Lamar is going to see some tougher teams, if you guys make the conference tournament, you know that you've probably faced some of the best guard play in the league. Oh, yes, we have. I mean, Lamar, they have six seniors on their team, and, and they're very seasoned. They understand the game. They, they play with each other for a couple of years. They know what to expect, and uh, I don't think you're going to face a, a tougher guard tandem than uh, 
than what we're facing against Lamar. Um, and it makes it difficult, you know, because they have the, uh, the ability to be explosive offensively and, and score the basketball. When we saw a layup by Terry Tibble play before this, uh, talk about Terry's game plan. And we know his ankle got a little nicked up there towards the end of the game. What's the, what's the prognosis on that? Uh, right now, you know, Terry's out. Um, he's he's going to have an MRI later on this week, and, and we'll have a little more information after that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's tough to see him go down with an ankle injury. He fought through that uh, a year ago and, and came back strong. So uh, we'll definitely miss Terry while he's out. The plus side is, and we've seen it today, you've got lots of big men down there that can help out. Borden, Harks, Chris Henson we haven't seen a lot of. So there's definitely players who can step up and help fill a spot. Yes, sir. You know, and like we always tell our guys, you know, you got to be prepared. It's a long season. You never know what's going to happen through injuries or whatever the case may be. So you have to be ready. And, and there's some minutes there that, that, that people are going to be fighting for. So uh, hopefully the guys who haven't had an opportunity to play as much uh, as they would like or we have liked early in the season will be ready to step in and fill that void that, that we're going to have with Terry missing. As we see the game come to an end here, what's important to see is that these guys aren't giving up. You saw two threes there from Borden before that earlier, a nice little pull up from Dewan. You guys battled the entire time here, and even as the lead sort of gets out of hand here, not out of hand, but gets a little further away, you never gave up. No, our guys didn't give up. You know, our fans were there. They support us throughout the game, and, and the fact that our guys continue to fight and play hard throughout that, uh, throughout that game, even though we were down pretty big, you know, it, it said a lot about their character and a lot about their reserves. So uh, if we can play with that energy for the whole season, it, it'll give us an opportunity to be pretty competitive in conference. Crawford led the team once again with 18 points, Miles with 16, Rutledge with 10, and five rebounds. Rutledge fouled out, but again, we saw balanced scoring around the field for the Bears. Yes, we did, and that's, that's something we're going to have to have uh, throughout the season. We have to share the basketball. Uh, I think we only had 11 assists, but uh, the fact that we have more people that are capable of scoring the basketball is going to make it difficult for teams to uh, stop us from putting points on the board. So uh, we'll have to continue to work at that and, and hopefully get some easier shots. We'll talk about our Sonic play of the week here right now. We'll go with Robert Crawford's four three-pointers against Nickel State on Wednesday night. You could pick either game. He played incredibly well from three-point range for you. Why is he keying in so well right now? Well, you know, that's what Rob does best. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a great shooter from the three-point line. Uh, he had to find his way in the offense throughout the season, and our guys had to have a better understanding of, of what his strengths were. And, and Rob has really accepted that role, and he understands what he needs to do to, to be effective for this team. And uh, if we can continue to have Rob shoot 55% for the season from the three-point line, that's going to be a big plus for us. All right, we'll be back with more on the Central Arkansas Basketball Report right after this. Real Yellow Pages, yp.com and yp.com on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. At Zaxby's, all of our salads are made fresh to satisfy any craving. Like the blue, with a bold taste of real blue cheese and buffaloed or blackened chicken. The house, or the Caesar. With so many flavor pack choices, you'll be seeing salad in a whole new way. Guess someone forgot to tell us that salads are supposed to be boring. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Welcome back on the Central Arkansas Bear Basketball Report. Now we mentioned it a little bit in the last segment, but when we get into our AT&T Player of the Week, we're gonna stick with junior Robert Crawford. Averaged nearly 19 points last week to lead the team. When we have one of the Southland's leading scorers in, in LaQuentin Miles, but you, you didn't have to rely on him. Crawford did a lot of work, had eight three-pointers as well in two contests. He seems to be hitting full stride as you're getting in the thick of conference season. That's exactly what we need, you know, with, with Robert playing at the level he's playing, uh, if we can continue to get him to stay there and be consistent, it's going to be a big plus for us. Uh, we're just very happy with his, his progression as the season's going on. He's gotten better each, each month, each game. So uh, he's, he's definitely a guy we're going to depend on here during this last stretch of conference. Now at home we got to see a lot of his perimeter shooting strengths, but what would you say, would you say that's his biggest strength or would you say that there are other things that can lead from him when the teams know that, that they have to be cautious of this, maybe he can pull in and get the easier layups? Right, and, that, and that's just the second phase of his progression. You know, Once he figures out the teams are going to start keying in on him shooting the three-point shot, he has to be able to use, utilize the shot fake, getting into the gaps, penetrating, uh, pulling up for jump shots, or finding teammates that are open. And uh, he's done a good job of that in practice, and, and we'll see how he adjusts 
once these teams make adjustments during the season. All right, we'll get into our log cabin stat of the week now. You guys out rebounded both teams last week in Nickel State and Lamar, 90 to 76. Now that says something about the effort of this team and how hard they're willing to work. Yes, it does. You know, our guys have, have taken the challenge of, as far as uh, rebounding the basketball. Uh, they do a good job of, of crashing the offensive boards. So uh, if we can keep that up, it, it just gives us extra possessions, extra shots when we're able to get offensive rebounds. And then, of course, when you get defensive rebounds, we get an opportunity to push the ball in transition, which is where we're at our best. Does this signal something to you that says they're finally buying into all facets of the game and not only the offensive possessions? Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we definitely think the guys have bought into to what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, they don't necessarily do it every time or play as hard as they can, but they understand it and, and they want to do well. So, and that's our job as coaches to continue to push them in practice and to show them how to be consistent. All right, you guys leave out on Tuesday to take on southeastern Louisiana and the Lions down in Hammond, Louisiana. That's a, not the longest road trip that you face, but a difficult one. And then again, you're going to turn right back around and head back out on the road. So this was a tough week for the Bears. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal week when you look at the uh, travel schedule, but. Um, our guys will be up for the challenge. Uh, we, we've got a couple of sleeper buses that we're going to take on a trip to southeast Louisiana so our guys can get back for class uh, on Thursday morning. So um, I think we'll be up for the challenge. We had an early practice uh, today, so we'll, we'll, we'll be ready to get in there and get some rest and play. Give us a little preview on what, what the Bears are going to face down in Hammond. Well, you know, you get down to southeast Louisiana, the, the leading scorer is, has been out for a month. Uh, we're praying that he doesn't make it back for this game. Um, <laughs> But you know they're 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 a big team. Uh, they they kind of play in the half court. They're not an up and down, uh, full court style team. So that's another game that we feel like we can kind of change the momentum, change the uh, pace of the game. If we can get them in a full court uh, style of basketball game, we'll have an opportunity to uh, to come out with a win. All right, then you guys are going down to Lake Charles to take on McNeese, the team sitting right above you in conference play. You have identical overall records. They just have one more win in conference. That's a tough place to play, and not only that, but you're playing them on Sunday, which is kind of the unique challenge for you guys. Yes, it is. You know, everyone we used to playing on Saturdays. I think they have a rodeo or something there, so our game got pushed back a day. Um, and it's a pretty long trip. We're going to break it up, leave out Friday, and, and spend the night in Shreveport, practice there, and, and head down to um, Lake Charles on Saturday. But uh, it's a tough place to play. McNeese has been playing well in conference, so. Um, we have to come out and play, play hard. You know, we want to try to close that gap as far as them being ahead of us in, in our division. So hopefully our guys will be prepared. You talked about some of the X's and O's against facing these two teams. What are some of the things you're doing to keep these guys loose when you're going to be on the road for so long this week? Well, you know, uh, we, we just try to try to uh, try our best to, to keep them focused, you know, especially uh, going down to Lake Charles. That's why we're leaving a day earlier uh, than we normally would so we can stay in Shreveport. The guys can get a chance to relax and uh, you know, just break that trip up in half rather than making a long track down there, which I think could give them a chance to keep their legs and, and, and they'll be focused. Uh, we may go out and watch a movie or do something as a team just to, to have a little bonding time. All right, Bears fans, like we said, unfortunately you're not going to be able to see them at home this week away at southeastern Louisiana on Wednesday and then on Sunday taking on the McNeese Cowboys down in Lake Charles. If you want to listen into the games, you can always. You're welcome to join in on the Bear 91.3 KUCA. You can pick that up here in Conway, or if you're not here in town, you can listen and watch on UCASports.com on the live streaming. So check out the Bears and check out Coach Carlos Williamson. For myself, Kirby Smith, like I said, Steve Sullivan will be back next week for your regular episodes of the Central Arkansas Bear Basketball Report. The Corliss Williamson Call-In Show is on the buzz 103.7 at 8 p.m. on Mondays at JJ's Grill in Conway. Come out to watch the show live, meet Big Nasty, and enjoy the weekly specials.